Hi everyone, welcome to This Is The Police. This is going to be a first look at this new, newish game. It's been out about a month now. Uh, I've been watching a lot of it on uh, on live streams and it just looks like a game I want to settle back in in the evenings and enjoy. Uh, basically, you are a... Uh, you run the police department in the town of Freeburg and it's up to you to kind of balance the good and the bad, sort of the mafia and the internal politics which are going around the police department to try and basically make enough money for your retirement. You've got a year left and that's what you're going to do. Uh, we're going to start a new game. I did a quick tutorial just to basics learning the uh, uh, you know, the basic functions on how to go around the uh, the station, that kind of thing. So here we are. Every morning you get an update via these three papers. The Freeburg Tribune. City Hall confirms rumours of Jack Boyd's resignation. That's us, by the way. Um, we didn't know about it. The, basically, the mayor made, said we were been resigning. So we've been resigning, apparently. The Golden Bird. Mayor Rogers. Sex maniac. Who knew? And the fact, Freeburg's number one paper on Monday, the July the 15th. Uh, Mark War 2 to be shown in Freeburg the day before its worldwide premiere by the mayor's personal request. Fantastic. Let's get to work. See, we got this old jalopy. Absolute bag of crap. Third time's a charm. Let's head to work. When I was a kid, my father sometimes told me at bedtime that if I closed my eyes and didn't open them for a long time, all the demons would blow away. Yesterday I turned 60. But I still take his advice. Not because I'm sentimental or want to keep the memory of my father alive. I just can't think of a better solution. To get away from all the demons that haunt Freeburg, I'd need to wear a blindfold 24-7. Plus, it's a good idea to act blind when talking to reporters. At least that's what my colleagues say. They're afraid of press conferences. But for me, it's more like a confessional. No matter what lies you tell, you're privately thinking the honest answers. It helps me remember who I am. I'm the like that as that well. I'll be reading all about it in the papers tomorrow. Especially when somebody asks you a question and you think, penance for the I can't picture. answer that truthfully. In anything, in work or anything. That's exactly how I am. You always think in it. You think, the, and then you hope what comes out of your mouth is the politically correct or the, the professional answer. But sometimes you worry. This is the first time I'm afraid of those answers my mind has given me. Oh, Not I because know that I'm feeling. mad I'm losing my job. Though it's true, I'm mad as hell. Not because I subconsciously blame everyone else. Though I damn sure do blame them. And don't even ask me what my next move is. I can't imagine. But He's on meltdown. It's true. The worst thing is, I know I'm going to have to do something. And I'll be damned if I know how far I'll go. I may have a lot of vices, but predictability isn't one of them. Oh, this sounds like it's going to go good. So we're going to have this press conference because basically we've been told we, we were resigning and we had no idea about it. I learned a long time ago how to drive away the swarming demons. But what do you do when they're trying to rip your soul from your skin? Shutting my eyes tight as I can. The best solution remains the same. Play blind. I just hope the reporters think I was blinded by the camera flash. Okay, so here we go. Good morning, let's say. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my press conference. Yesterday, the mayor's office announced your resignation. Did this come as a surprise, or did you know about this in advance? This was a complete surprise. I thought I'd be working as a policeman for another five to ten years. I just want to serve the city. I was very surprised, of course. Do you already know your name of your successor? No! Otherwise I would have known I was losing my job, you muppet. Of course not. I don't think that the mayor's office knows who it is either. After the recent corruption scandal, your deputy Francis Kendrick said he is looking forward to resigning. Looking forward to resigning? Um, uh, if the mayor offered him the position, do you think he'd change his mind? Uh, yeah, probably. Perhaps. Sounds possible if he thinks the new office would help him serve the city a little longer. Although Kendrick was acquitted, many still believe that the police are cooperating with the Mafia. Do you have anything to say on this? Bullshit. I don't know. If it helps the police, no comment. Uh, I don't know. 
Uh, I've never worked with the Mafia, but I can't speak for every man and woman in the department. I can't follow all my employees around the clock. That's stalking. That's an offence, people. Talking to a policeman here. I love our little bold spot. Uh, do you think your personal relationship with the mayor could be the reason behind your retirement? Uh, how should I know? <laughs> You'd better ask him. Good answer. Thank you. Okay, end of press conference. Can we get to work now? No, more story. How's the back today, Mr. Boyd? Same as usual. How did the press conference go? You can read about it in the newspapers tomorrow. Oh, we're Don't right, dude, shall not we? Even Mr. Kendrick? Especially, especially. Mr. Oh, especially. <laughs> I preempted what he was going to say. Poor Emma. She has to put up with our mood swings all day, every day. Oh, we're on drugs by the looks of it. Do you reckon that's just medication or are they um, recreational? Or maybe we've got an addiction to some painkillers. Ah, oh, sitting back with a cigar. Bald head is shining. Beautiful. That was a lovely sequence. Oh. As soon as I heard the door creak, I knew what face I'd see. When I tell Emma not to let anyone in, there's only one man it could be. Rude, Ooh. arrogant, no warning. That's Mayor Rogers in a nutshell. Oh, it's the mayor. White summer shoes, white socks, white shorts, Ooh. white polo shirt, and the white smile of a hungry shark. You've been playing tennis. Mayor Rogers enters every room like he owns the place. Even the floorboards under his feet sound like they're creaking an apology. He never shied away from the odd corruption scheme. It's like the devil walks behind him. In the movies, the villains controlling the city play golf with the judges. Rogers plays tennis with them instead. I, I, it's about the well, only I'm, difference. I'm okay yeah, with that. Tennis is a great game. I was hoping to catch you after the press conference. You, uh, you ran away so quick. He looks evil, doesn't he? Look at him. Creek. There's no oh, smoking my, in my city hall. painting of no the uh, for me to hang around. Well. The ship's morning, just gone a bit squonk. A ban on smoking in all public buildings. Oh, Rogers, Soon you bugger. you won't be able to smoke here either. Ah, oh, my <laughs> one pleasure in life. Here at all. Yeah, you tell him, Jack. Yeah, you straighten my picture up, Mayor Rogers. to talk to you about. The people of this city like you, Jack. The police chief of all people. <laughs> don't, uh, don't betray that, Jack. Don't get wrapped up in any schemes. Sit nice and quiet for the next 180 days, and uh, and you'll be remembered as a hero. That's so you got 180 days. That's what we've got to survive. Have left. Be the hero. Then how am I supposed to scrape together a retirement fund? You had a million chances to secure a luxury pension, one that even I would have envied, although I've never set aside any money for myself. I'm not planning to retire anytime soon. I don't like this guy. Oh, he's taking my cigar. How dare you? One hundred eighty no. days of quiet. Not my Jack. model town. That's all I need. I don't have any problems with you. That's all I need. And you won't have any problems What's he up to? with me. Right, so this that's the premise of it. We've got to survive 180 days in office and make enough for money for our retirement if funds. If you have something to tell me, call him. Troy Star. Try not to bother him. He's a he's a busy man. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Rogers. I'll Get out of my, my office. Best. Go on, squeaky pants. Get out of my office. Up the office. One of my friends will be using it soon. It was 180 days, Rogers. 180 days. As he goes out the door. Oh, oh, oh my, oh my. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. Only the mayor has this number. Um, awkward. Mr. Mayor. Yeah, is this Troy Star? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Troy Star. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Love it. Okay, day two. Day one was a roaring success. The Golden Bird, head of culture department, owns Villa in Italy. Freeburg Tribune. Francis Kendrick could replace Jack Boyd. Jack Boyd. Mayor's, Mayor Rogers is a professional. The fact. Great. Go to work. Come on, come on, you old jalopy. Ah, third time's a charm. We're away. Okay, let's do some. No, no more story. The station cafeteria anymore. There's so there's a lot of story to begin with, but uh, once we get into the days, it will calm down. And we will actually be able 
do Everybody some gameplay, just but takes snacks it's from the quite story heavy to begin with. Just bear with it. And hammers it down in the corner like a vulture on a corpse. The main thing, don't look into anyone's eyes. Could be construed as an invitation to sit together. <laughs> the only people eating here are ghosts. Uh, it's a good um, commentary on social aspects of life, isn't it? My deputy, oh, a shadow. Francis Kendrick. He recently became one of those ghosts. The subject of one of the most devastating corruption scandals in the history of Freeburg. Ooh. No evidence to support the accusations, but everyone knows Kendrick's days are numbered. I need that file. Well, so are ours, Jack. So are ours. Be ready tonight. Francis didn't say anything, but I understood. Ghosts aren't supposed to talk. Besides, I got a feeling he was already finished. In more ways than one, I know they out. Okay, here we are. Tutorial. Um, I'm a six-year-old police chief a few months away from retirement. I don't need anyone telling me how to do my job. Yeah. Okay, so this is Shift B. This is our first lot of officers. So we have Kochi, who has um, a star rating. Now, these star ratings... Quick explanation of what's going on. These little star ratings are their proficiency level. Or their... Pro uh, is it proficiency or professionalism? I can't remember which. But anyway, 150 is what you'd class as average. So Coach she with 250. She's pretty good. She's got her stripes. And um, Yancey with 220. He's uh, he's pretty good as well. Purdy. She sure ain't Purdy. Um, 210. Good officer. Uh, Sabanki uh, with... 120, she's below average. Anso with 100, again, below answered. Austin with 90, below average. Price with 5. Price, look at her, she's an old lady. What's she doing on the... I can't send her out on the beat. But she's got 5 professionals, so she's useless, in fact. Uh, Mole, uh, DeBrito, and Armstrong are detectives. Uh, 150, so Mole is an average detective. Brito and Armstrong 100% each, so they are just below... Um, Average detectives. Uh, and the green bars on the side are energy levels. Uh, so if they get too low energy, they'll become... Uh, chances are they, they won't be doing their job properly. They'll miss things. They make mistakes, that kind of thing. And it can affect the overall uh, results of any job they go on. Right, let's start the day. Too much preamble. Ah, oh, nice bit of jazzy music to begin with. So here we are. We've got quite a... I'll take the uh, cigar off. That's the police station. Right, it's day two, 10 a.m. Here we go, we've got our first call in, hit and run, everyday mal. Um, a married couple exited a, a convenience store and saw a van in the parking lot backed over a homeless man who'd been digging through the trash can. The driver jumped out to help, but once he saw that he'd hit the bum, he got back into the van and quickly drove away. Okay, so we've got two officer slots here. Let's send uh, Kochi, best officer of the day, and let's send her with... Um, Sabanki. Uh, let's see if we get Sabanki above average. Go on. Good job, guys. Out they go. Okay, we've got a fight. A theatre manager reports during the showing of Citizen Kane, a drunk man attempted to force his way into the theatre, carrying a snowboard, <laughs> of all things, decorated with the words Rosebud. When he was denied entry, he violently attacked the cashier and is currently fighting with the theatre's security guard. Yan Yancey, you're up. Take, um, take Purdy. Ah, uh, don't take. Yeah, no. We need, we need. We'll keep a couple of officers back. We got our, We got the dregs. The three dregs of the office left. But we do have the SWAT team. Should anything really kick off. Oh, I love the jazz music. It's probably a copyright claim right there. But never mind. You see the rain sweeping in. Thunderstorms starting. Okay, the hit and run. Offender caught. Officers and harmed. Good job, guys. Plus ten to their professionalism. Well done. Now they'll be heading back to the office. You can see this. So when it goes up, that's when they're going to the scene. And when it's coming down, that's when they're coming back to the office. So the fight at the theatre. Off offender court. Officers unharmed. Civilians unharmed. Yancey, Purdy. Good job, guys. Uh, and ladies. Oh, that music. It's great. Armed robbery in the suburbs. Three teenagers armed with a shotgun robbed a video store and made off with a whole collection of adult movies, I say. The criminals fled in a car, but the store manager wrote down the car's license plates. The owner is one Janet Brown who lives in the suburbs. Okay, two officers. Um, do you know what? We're going to wait a second until we get one of our good officers back. Listen to a bit of music. 
Kochi, okay. Um, oh, hang on, this is a different one. Fight. A brother and sister clashed with each other over the deceased father's will. According to one of the lawyers, we don't dare separate them. Our security guard is off duty today. Kochi, take uh, Asano. So I saw that out. Uh, where's Yancy back? Yancy's back. Right, okay. So we've got the uh, the armed video store robbery. Uh, Yancy, uh, take Sabaki. Uh, do you want to take Price? No, take Austin. Oh, there's only, there's only a two officer job. Go on. Good job, guys. So we've got Purdy, who's two, 220, a good officer, and we've got two dregs here. Okay, we've got an assault that's coming in from the ghetto. A passerby saw some teen teenagers attacking an elderly musician, then run away with his guitar and his money. Purdy, take Austin. <laughs> oh god, we just got old lady Price with her five stars. Oh my god, please, please no calls come in for a moment. <laughs> please, please wait till our officers uh, finish the day. Right, fight report. Coachy and so, offender court, officers and harmed, plus 10. Good job, guys. Boom, here we go. The ram armed robbery in the suburb. A vehicle is in question is parked outside the Brown residence. The sounds of moaning and loud laughter can be heard from the living room window. They're watching the movies. Uh, so our options are knock on the door, open up, police. Turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout the house is surrounded. Sneak into the house through an open window. Uh, turn on the siren and loudspeaker and shout the house is surrounded. Come out with your hands up. And your trousers up as well. Yancey, Sebaski, officers caught, offenders caught, officers in the harms, good job. Sebanki is almost up to an average cop now. That's great. Thanks, Yancey. Really doing a great tutoring job there. Okay. Come on, guys. Come back. I'm, I'm scared. We've got old Lady Price. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is the uh, the ghetto. Offender escaped. Officers unharmed. They just lost 10. That's because of you, Austin. Although, I don't suppose Purdy is... Uh, she doesn't look like one for chasing after an offender. She doesn't look like she's got the, the greatest 100-meter um, dash time in her uh, sporting records, does she? Okay, I think we're coming up to the end of uh, day two. Kochi and Anso are back. Or Sano, even. I call it come Anso. I think that is the end of the day coming up. We're just waiting for the cops to come back. Nine o'clock has ticked over. Everyone's back in the station. Good job, guys. Not a bad day's work, if I do say so. Okay. So we've had a few level ups with Yancey and Kochi. Purdy has dropped a bit actually. Spanky has, has improved no end. Asano improved a little bit. Austin has dropped and old Mother Hubbard hasn't left the office. Tomorrow we've got shift A. We've got Stovel, Vandal, Robbins. So Stovel at 400. He's a fantastic officer. Uh, 160, 150. They're good average officers. Samadi. 110, he's got that kind of, he thinks he's good, but he's not really that good. Grant, 85, she's not all that. Birch, 60. Oh my god, look at his face. Birch Jr., 20. Wait, are these related? Are that, is that father and son? Look at that, they've got the face, the same smile. <laughs> Birch Jr., 20. And Roy. Oh my god, Roy. Hang on, that's another old woman, isn't it, I think? What is it with these old women? I can't send them out on the beat. Okay, end the day. Used to be when I asked Kendrick to stay late at the office, he liked to grumble and crack wise. Nowadays, he doesn't have the strength for it. Slumped shoulders, blank stare, wrinkled skin. The past few weeks, I don't hardly recognize my old friend. In his younger years, he reminded me of a gallant royal officer in an old Kipling story. Kendrick isn't just crumbling under the weight of the public pressure, but from the shame of it all. Internal Affairs raided the library he inherited from his grandfather, hoping they'd find buckets of cash stashed in the pages. Heard about the look on his face, the fearless policeman standing helpless in horror. I've known Francis for 30 years. The past 20 years, he's played loose with the law. And I know that at a certain point, every stolen dollar brings more misery than anything else. Probably sounds crazy, but... I sympathize with the guy. What can I do? 
Your friends are your friends, and these are the waters we swim in. Called all of the people on that list today. Now they know you're in business, so you could get a call from any of them. You don't need to worry about any of them. I've cleared them all. And what kind of business are we talking here? It's nothing too serious, just like you asked. Should be just a few small favors. Payments will vary depending on the situation and who you're dealing with. How much are you looking to earn? Half a million. Half a million? Wow, wow half a million. That is quite the retirement. Everybody wants to take Kitty. a million. Figured I'd try something different. <laughs> half a million in 180 days? Well, you could earn it all above board if you netted all the big fish and hit all your bonuses. Never knew you for a fisherman. Well, you never got into my business, and I'm not trying to get into yours. But be careful about bringing in any other cops. Sooner or later, they'll put the finger on you. And, and one more thing, Jack. I remember what you said, but I should probably add one more name to that list. Christopher Sand. Christopher Sand? Who's that? Christopher G. Sand. Everyone knows the name, but few could tell you who he is. The old man stays away from the spotlight. Always wears old-fashioned jeans and knitted sweaters. Gives to charity. Rarely attends social events. An avid Sounds hunter, like me. I hear. Even dabbles in poetry. You'd never guess he's the head of the oldest and most powerful gang in the city. Ah, oh, he's Matthew, Back is he? As far as his great-grandfather. And Sand is strict about following the old rules. He rarely involves himself in commonplace murders and robberies. Hardly needs to intimidate anyone to get his point across. The people who work for him each have their sphere. They provide protection where needed, even work with the authorities when they want to make a deal. Meanwhile, Sand pulls the strings without getting his hands dirty. People sometimes mistake his quiet approach. A couple years ago, an arms dealer decided to expand its business without asking permission, and his whole family paid the price. In four weeks, Sand killed 31 people, old men, women, even a few teenagers. And Sand's people made sure every paper reported it. Frank, I don't want to hear you say that name again. Jack, please, listen to me. I'm in with these guys. We agreed, Frank. What? That's not the kind of Frank, you're in I with the Mafia? I don't go oh, there. Oh, good God. Never have, never will. Although, I don't want to get him on my bad side, that's for damn sure. Ah, oh, so Frank's with the Mafia, is he? Day three. Right, so we'll do day three and see. We've been in a lot of, a lot of stories so far. Obviously, that will slacken. This is obviously building the plot giving you the reasons why we need to get the money so quickly. Uh, Francis Kendrick announces retirement date. Why is there coffee stains all over my newspapers? Freeburg Tribune. Construction of the Cinema Museum postponed again. Cinema Museum? Okay. The fact. Legendary singer Granado Crespo comes to Freeburg. Or Gennardo. Gennardo. Gennardo? Oh, this crappy old car. We need a half a million just to get a decent car. Third time's a charm every time. Right, shift A. Stripes. We've got two stripes we can award. Right, um, I'm going to give one to Beasley because he's a good uh, detective and we need that. Uh, and I guess I may hold on to those for Sai... Uh, no, I'm going to give it to Vandal. There you go, 210. That's boosted his morale and his professionalism off gate. Okay, let's start the day. Come on, day two. Okay, and we can choose some songs to play on the old record player. Uh, we'll go with no music today for copyrights and that kind of thing. Right, shift A. Shift B did all well. All right, yesterday, we've got to show the way. Oh, God, Roy. Okay, um, police station. We've got labor market. We can employ two more people. So we've got um, Yang Kojak. <laughs> got to get Kojak, 190 professionalism. Mazza, uh, Silk, uh, 130, not too bad. Tim McDonald, not great. O'Sullivan, not great. Look at her. She's not going to be able to chase down. No, no offence. She's not going to be able to chase down any offenders, though, is he? Teresa Weaver, she looks like um, the old uh, cougar off Birds of a Feather. Doesn't she? 
She's now doing the uh, the dancing thing. Uh, she's 250 professionalism though, so she is a good detective. Um, Laura Turner, 130. Uh, Nilay, uh, 100. So I think we're going to get some officers. So Kojak, um, I'm going to get you for I'm going to get you for shift A. And we can oh we can hire a detective. So we'll hire Teresa, and you can go on to shift uh, A as well. Great, great job. Okay, uh, let's have a look at this. St. John's Cathedral. We received a frightening call from the local cathedral. This morning, the abbot discovered that somebody entered the old cemetery during the night. The old yard's tombstones are painted with satanic symbols, and some have been broken on into pieces. It seems there even be marks from a shovel, but the abbot would say no more. Ooh, it's like very midsummer murders, isn't it? Um, Stovall, you're up. Take, take, take... Uh yeah, take Sam Ali, Sam Sam Al, Sam Adi. Come on, I can't speak. Put my teeth in. Okay, go and check out that. Uh, we got some vandalism at Atticus Tower. Businessman Harley Jones, looking out his window, saw two teenagers scratching offensive slogans on his new car. Vandal, take take Grant. Oh no, don't take Roy. Take Grant. Can't take some names. Okay, Robbins, I'm sorry, you're with the, the Birch Boys and old old Mother Roy. Um yeah, you're on your own really. Oh my goodness, look at these. These these are terrible officers. What we're gonna do, we're gonna have to try and put two officers and put one of these on the edge, try and hopefully pick up some uh, points for them. Offenders Court, officers and hands. This is the vandalism at the church. Stovel up to four ten. Samadhi. Up to 120. Good job, guys. Suspicious individual. Eddie's Burgers. A waitress named Mila reports that she's just served a chicken Eddie and a Diet Coke to a dangerous criminal who's she's seen on the television just this morning. The culprit is sitting at the window eating a burger. That's unlikely. Birch Jr. Roy, you're up. That sounds like a waste of time, doesn't it? Ah, oh, officers... Offender escaped, officers unharmed, they dropped some points. That's you, Grant. That's all you. Why are you so rubbish? Ah. She's bringing down Vandal, one of our good officers. Well, above average officers, should I say. Not good. But, um. So we have a look in here. Our labour market. So they are the people. We've obviously hired them. No backlog message yet. Personnel. So this is Shift B. So we've got three detectives on shift A, uh, B, and we've got another one joining shift A. So that's three. That's great. And actually, we could have put maybe another officer on shift B, but hey-ho. That's the deal. Let's see how it's going. It's quite a quiet day so far. Stovall and Robbins and back. Suspicious individual. The waitress is mistakenly re mistaken retired officer Frank Nero for a fugitive in question. Okay. False alarm. Uh, King Lewis nightclub. Mr. Boyd, my bouncer stuffed himself with Mexican food again, <laughs> and now he can't get off the can. <laughs> Meantime, the line outside my club is stretching around the block. We need somebody outside who can tell the cool guys from the punks. Um, I think that's a job for Roy. As soon as she's back, she, you know, what you want is an old lady casting her evil eye over these people. Roy, you're up. Sending Sam, I'm sending my best officer. Go get him, Roy. <laughs> yeah, I feel evil. But that's a good fun. Drug sales. Uh, anonymous call has just come in. A clown carrying balloons at a skating rink is selling crack to teenagers. Now, there's a big craze in the UK and around, well, in America as well, I think, and around Europe where people are trying to scare people dressed as clowns. It's just really bizarre. Um, so, drug sales. We're going to take this seriously. Stovel, you're up. Uh, take, take Robbins. We're going to take two of our... Good officers. Off you go, guys. Fantastic. Oh, suicide threat. Uh, Fleet Street, a naked man carrying a canister of gasoline has threatened to set himself on fire unless his favourite chewing gum becomes popular again. <laughs> what? What? Okay, Vandal uh, and Samadhi, you're up. Uh, they're the two best we have at hand. See what you can do, guys. Oh god, we got Grant. Grant's now our best officer with Birch and Junior. Oh my goodness me, look at that. That's miserable. 
Team Birch. Oh, God. Sorry, Chief, but I quit. Yes! In one night, I pulled in more cash than I earned in a month working at, at this dump. Mr. Sorkin said he wouldn't mind taking me on. What? Roy? Really? Sam, you want to employ Roy? Are you mental? I guess I just wasn't cut out to be a cop. Okay, bye, Roy. And we got four and a half grand for that. Brilliant. We're up to $6,900. Oh, and we got rid of Roy without us having to uh, sack her. Uh, as the police arrive, the clown is seen making balloons animals for the kids. Take the clown down to the ice and round up any witnesses. Cover up the raincoat and pretend to be an illicit customer. Carefully watch the clown from the stands. Stovall Robbins. Offender caught. Officers in harms. Good job, guys. Good job. Robbins is now up to 160. Suicide threat. Oh, offender caught. Officers in harms. Vandal. Samadhi. Good job, guys. Good job. That is uh, that was a result. I, I feared that you wouldn't be able to... Uh... What a good day that has been. Not only have we got rid of Roy, we've earned four and a half grand. I know, we've got a long way to go before our uh, half a mil. But there we go. End of day three. Good job, guys. Right, we'll leave it there, guys. This has been the first taster of... This is the police. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to do a few more of these, and these will be going over to the TAF Exile Extra channel, uh, and they'll be running as a series on there. Um, so yeah, if you fancy it, go out, go over and check it out. It's uh, it's a great game. I'm really enjoying it, and um, I'm definitely going to see how far I can go into my retirement fund before I get the sack or get knocked off, whichever it comes the sooner. So for now. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoy this, and I will see you next time.